Hey guys, I'm Tom, and in this video I'll guide you through how I created a stunning elven fantasy style house, simply because I had a really clear process for it, and hopefully you guys can learn something from that. Step 1 actually started outside of the game. I had already decided that I wanted to make a fantasy elven build, but the project only existed as an idea. I needed to get inspired, and so I hopped onto Pinterest and searched for some Tolkien-esque concept art. Pinterest is one of the best resources for finding artistic inspiration, and is normally a lot better than Google Images. I saved a short list of the most suitable pictures, and then took my favourite parts from each one. For example, the front section of this one, the colour scheme from here, and the tower from this design, combining them into a quick sketch. For the terrain, I wanted the structure to sit on the edge of some large cascading waterfalls, much like Rivendell. Making a sketch is not something that I usually do for builds, and I don't have an artistic background so it's nothing to show off, but I found it very helpful for the rest of the process and so I'd recommend giving it a go if you haven't before. In game, I started by laying down some block palettes. I picked out short gradients, mainly going off of my gradient colour wheel, which of course you can find on my community discord server or download for free via my Planet Minecraft page. I chose to have a cyan roof, bronze roof trim, white walls and a brown wall trim. I also slapped down a funky orange gradient that I wanted to use for the leaves of some fantasy trees, as well as a potential grayscale gradient for the terrain. I'll speedrun my process for the terrain since, although it is complicated, it's nothing that I haven't covered on this channel before. I started by using Archeon's loft tool to make the base shape of a steep cliff, which I then roughened up with Metabrush's Metaball, and smoothed with Voxel Sniper's Blendball brush. Then I merged some arc boulders into the terrain, defining the cliff edges where my waterfalls would flow off of. After that, I used a sphere brush of air to carve out my river channel, flattened the base and smoothed out its banks. I filled in the river with placeholder blue wool, and used the loft tool again, now with the D flag, to stack the flowing water down to the ground. For the cliff in the background, I used the angled cliff meta brush to layer some ledges, and smoothed them out again using the blend ball brush. Then I applied a layer of grass via an overlaid angle mask. The remaining stone was textured using a quick pearl and noise pattern, and I added an upper waterfall on the right hand side. I'd highly recommend checking out my terrain tutorial playlist for detailed guides on all of these techniques. With the spooky terrain out of the way, we can focus on the actual structure. Following my reference sketch, I began to outline the front facade with its curving side roofs just establishing the fundamental shapes with wall placeholder blocks. Once I had happily defined my building scale compared to my sketch, I could continue to build at that scale by following the sketch. This is a slow part of the process, and it comes with a lot of trial and error, which is important. To form curving roofs like these, make each level shorter every time you move in a block towards the middle, as if the outline is an arc of a larger circle. You'll also notice that I added a lot of depth to my base shaping, and I achieved this by overhanging the roofs by one block, and knocking back the white walls between the brown trims by one block as well. This extra space is significant for detailing later on. Additionally, I added curved doorways, windows and dormers, alongside ridges and chimneys, which act to break up the larger shapes and make the overall composition more interesting. To block in the gradients quickly, I used the GoPaint plugin's gradient brush, and then fixed up the patterns by hand. For the details, I used the spruce shaping blocks, as well as mud brick walls and barrels, since they colour match with the oak logs. I'll highlight the curving ends of the roof cresting, the undersides of the roof trim, and the smooth layered curves of the front threshold. I love to utilise open fence gates to smoothly transition between full blocks and most of the time it actually looks a lot cleaner than using inverted stairs in the same positions. At some point I moved the whole structure forward so that it was closer to the cliff edge and raised it up onto a platform, so that it fit into the terrain wall instead of just sitting on it. On top of the grass blocks I added a pearl and noise pattern of grass, ferns and air, and I did the same for the riverbed with seagrass and kelp. I also brushed in small clusters of lily pads. For the trees, I used some older assets, but made fancy variants with the aforementioned orange gradient and darker trunks. A little bit of colour theory for you guys. Orange and blue are complementary colours, and so that's probably why the trees fit in well here, against the roofs and the water. To contrast the white walls against the light grey platform, I added a grey trim along their base, then introduced some subtle variation to the remaining wall blocks. 
At this point, the build was obviously nearing completion, however it was desperately lacking in those magical finishing touches. And so I took a quick screenshot and sent it to my friends, in order to collect some feedback. My creative mode building friends immediately recognised that the grey chimneys and new tower were blending into the cliff behind them, and so I made a note to change those elements to white instead. My survival mode building friends pointed out that the build as a whole was missing some life, and recommended adding flowers and vegetation to the terrain and also to the structure. Getting constructive feedback and successfully implementing said feedback was absolutely vital to the aesthetics of this project. And if you were to take just one thing away from this video, it would be to simply ask for help when you get stuck. If you want this build in your own world, you can download it on my Patreon, alongside all of my other work. This mansion possibly maybe does not have an interior, so perhaps customizing your own interior could be a fun project. Regardless, thanks for watching.